Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church live stream worship. We're praying that all is well, that God will continue to keep us during these times. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, now we thank you. For those who are listening by way of social media, oh God, we ask that you protect their families. Father, we ask that you keep in your care. Father, bless these ministers of music that are here. Bless, we know the word that we preach, we already be blessed. Look at the messenger, bless me in the same like manner. We thank you for you being God and God alone. For that, God, we give you the praise. We give you the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Again, we welcome all of you to the Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church live stream. We are so glad to have all of you here with us, the Mount Zion members and visiting friends. Uh, we're here to give God praise. We know we have, last Sunday, we told all of you to buy some form of juice or leavened bread or crackers that we will administer the Lord's Supper immediately after the sermon. All right, we're getting ready. Give God a hand clap of praise as these ministers of music that is here with us, they would minister to us through song. Let's hear ye them, and then we prepare ourselves for the word of God. Let's hear ye them.
Now, God, as we prepare our hearts for your word, give us wisdom, give us knowledge, give us understanding. Speak to me and speak through me. Father, that you may be glorified. Souls will be saved. Saints will be strengthened. In Jesus' name and for his sake, we will forever pray. Amen. To the dry triune Godhead, to these ministers of music, to all of you who are listening by way of social media, to the Mount Zion family and friends. God is good yes, he is. all of the time and all of the time. God is good. In the book of 2 Corinthians, in the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 6, 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 2. The word of God tells us this. For he said, I have heard thee in a time accepted. And in the day of salvation have I succorned thee. Behold, now is the acceptable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. <laughs> I want to talk on this thought, the urgency of now. Mm -hmm. The urgency of now. When we look at the word now, now is an adjective, adverb. It is, it means at the present time. Mm -hmm. It means immediately. It means at once or at this exact time. We will discover that the verse that is before us, the word now refers to a particular time and a time of now, exactly at this giving, given moment. But we have the tendency to defer now to a better time. Someday, I will do all things I intended to do. One day, I will become more dedicated. One day, I will commit myself to the work of the gospel and the church. One day, when conditions are favorable and the pandemic is over, I'll give to the church, I will help the poor, I will witness to the lost, and I will visit the sick. Someday I will become a better person as it relates to my relationship with Jesus Christ. We always put off now for someday. But I come to tell you, we, we need to understand that there is an urgency of now. Because people are dying now. People are being put in the grave now. People are being diagnosed with COVID-19 now. The disease is not waiting. The virus is not waiting. Death is not waiting. So why are you putting off tomorrow what you can do right now? The fact is that many of us know what we need to do now, but we ignore it as to believe that we have more time. We always have the tendency to say, as an old cliche, that time is on my side. But who lied and told you that? Every time you get up in the morning, time is against you. As you go through the day, time is against you. And if you're listening at me this morning, and if you've not accepted Jesus as your personal savior, there's an urgency of now because not only tomorrow is not promised, but the rest of the day is not promised. So there is an urgency of now. Well, preacher, what needs to happen now? Well, well, we know normally we would go through a lot of preliminaries, but we're going to get straight to the points. What needs to 
happen now. Number one, make sure you write this down. Repentance is now. Look what he says in verse 2, for he have said, I have heard thee in time accepted and in the day of salvation. Before I can even get into the realm of salvation, I must become into a realm of repentance. Many think the word repent means to get your act together, uh, to get religion, uh, to straighten up and fly right and turn over a new leaf. But that's, that's not repentance, that's just making a change. Repentance requires taking a whole new point of view. In other words, when I repent, I start looking at things God's way. Well. Repentance is a noun. Repentance means great remorse, contrition, or for past conduct and disobedience. A deep sorrow for a sinful life, a deep Sorrow for wrongdoings and error. When I repent, I repent means I've changed not only my ways, but I've changed to God and his ways. Because many of us can change our ways and still be lost. Many of us can stop doing something and still be lost. True repentance is when you are so remorse of what you've done, that only the blood of Jesus can get you back into right standing with God. Look at the words. He says, I succorn thee. The word succorn means to succord, means to give existence in time of womb. To give existence in time of difficulty and distress. What I'm trying to say, to repent, we're going to need God's help to fully do it. Once we turn, we're going to need God's help to keep us on this road. Don't be naive to believe that you have come this far on your own. Some of us are so religiously and heavenly bound that we are no earthly good. We think that we come this far by ourselves and we think we didn't need God to turn around. But baby, if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, we will still be in the same predicament. That's one thing I love about the psalmist when he says in Psalms 27 and 5, For in a time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. And in the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me, because he set me upon a rock. Now isn't that funny what the text, the verse just said? Now he's hiding me, but he's put me on a rock. Now, Lord, I'm in plain view, but I'm still hidden. I wish I had somebody to testify. God can put you in plain view and hide you and protect you at the same time. We need to seek the Lord. In Isaiah 55, and 6 and 7, it says, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the evil man his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord and he will have mercy on him. And to our God, for he will freely pardon. There should be some praises going on that when we turn to God, when we repent, God will receive us. God will accept us. Yeah, people still try to hold you hostage with your history. Try to bring up things you used to do in places you used to go and how you used to act. And tell them, yeah, you used the right word, used to. I don't do that anymore since I've met Jesus. There's been a change in my life. He said, we got to repent. Repentance is now. All of this that is going on, if you don't know the Lord or you've been rejecting him or you've been turning from him, this is the time to turn to him. You've been walking away before the pandemic came. The preachers, your family members been begging you to come to church and now you can't even come to the church house but I I beseech you this morning that wherever you are repentance is now you don't have to come to a church house to repent you can repent right where you are as you're driving along and sitting in your living room sitting in your bedroom cooking in the kitchen hearing my voice you can just say Jesus come 
into my life where I am and he will meet you where you are. I wish I had somebody to testify. Say he'll meet you where you are. Come here legion man for the legion of demons. He came to the graveyard where he was. Come here Lazarus. He came to the graveyard where he was. Three Hebrew boys. He came in the fire where they were. Jesus will come meet you where you are. If you just repent from your sin. When you look at the word repent, R-E-P-E-N-T, the prefix re means to go back to the original state or go back to the point of origination. The word pent means where we get the word penthouse means a high point. And so when I say re, that means he is bringing me back to the point of origination. In other words, the place where I fell from, he will put me back at that place. Pent means a high place. And every time you fall, every time you sin, you fall below the standard by God created you. And when you sin and when you repent, God takes you back to that place of origination. And I'm so glad that he's that type of God that don't hold grudges. I'm so glad that he's the type of God that don't throw your, your sins in your face, put it on Facebook, put it on Twitter. But he's the type of God that crush your sins and not rub them in, but rub them out. He's the type of God that would take you back from where you fell from and strengthen you again. Is there anybody that can testify with me? Now thank God that he's that type of God that will bring us back to where we were. Right. Now, not only is, is repentance now, but then secondly, salvation is now. Watch this. He says in the text, he said, For I heard thee in the time of accept, accept that in the day of salvation, I have succored thee. In other words, he is saying, when I said succored, he is going to assist us in salvation because we can't save ourselves. Salvation is the preservation or deliverance from destruction or a pending evil. Deliverance from the power and the penalty of sin. If all of us can admit we were on our way to hell, every last one of us, we were on our way to a devil's hell. But I thank God that he died on the cross. Went in a cold grave. And early the third day morning, he got up with all power in his hand. And even though we've been, we repented, even though we have accepted Jesus Christ as our Savior, we still need some work on us. None of us have arrived yet. We still fall. We still mess up. We still say the wrong thing. We still do the wrong thing. We still go in the wrong direction. But yet, I thank God that he's the type of God that when I fall, he'll pick me up again. When I stray off, he'll put me back on course again. I wish I had somebody to testify and say, I thank God that salvation is now. And I don't have to go through no orientation class to get saved. I don't have to go through formalities to get saved. You can be saved right now. You can be saved at this moment right now. There is no test you need to pass. There is no finals you need to complete. You just go and ask Jesus to come into your life. Confess the Lord Jesus with all of your heart and with your mind and with your soul and believe that God had raised him from the dead. The Bible says, then shall ye be saved. Jesus is the only one that can save us. Acts 4.12 says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name among heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. 1 Timothy 2 and 5 says, For there is one God, one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. Oh, but I love what Romans 5, 8 says. For God commended his love toward us. And then while we were yet sinners. Let me let's just stay in the gumbo a little while. While we were yet sinners. While we were still doing wrong. Christ died for us. God made salvation available to us through his son. 
And when Jesus went to Calvary, and when he died upon the cross, when he went in the grave, and by the power of God, he got up on the third day morning, our salvation was sealed, and we were saved and sanctified. And when you say you're sanctified, remember, that's not a denomination. That's a requirement and an obligation. You don't go when people ask you, are you sanctified? You don't go around saying, no, I'm Baptist. No, sanctification is not a denomination. It's a requirement and an obligation. Sanctified means that I am set apart to do the work of God. God has moved me from, from where I was to put me where I am that he may be the glory. So I may be Baptist by denomination, but I'm sanctified by requirement and obligation. I wish I had somebody to testify that I'm glad God set me apart. I'm glad God made me a little different. I'm glad I'm not familiar to the world, but I'm peculiar to the world. Salvation is right where you are. There's an urgency of now because repentance is now. Salvation is now. But then thirdly, grace is now. Grace is an unmerited gift. Grace is something that you and I don't deserve. Grace is much more than the abstract idea of that uh, misunderstood by so many people. Grace is more than just a spiritual principle that can be learned or unlearned. Grace is the dynamic intervening work of God that is real and tangible. It is the true encounter between the supernatural of God and the frail of humanity. Humanity in the presence of divinity. Grace is the power from above dispersed to meet the needs of human life. Grace is right here with us. God's redemption at Christ's expense. Grace is right here with us. And I thank God that I experience his grace. In grace, God gives you extensions. When, when you have a loan and you default and you loan and you call and don't have the money to pay, they say we will give you a grace period. In other words, we will give you an extension and give you time. And that's one thing I love about grace. God puts up with us with grace. And with grace, God gives us grace because we need grace. Oh, y'all looking for some long theological explanation. God gives us grace because we need grace. I cannot survive without grace. We need his grace and we need grace's twin. We need grace and mercy. Every day of our lives, we need grace and we need mercy. For by the grace we are saved through faith. Not of yourselves, it is a gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are the workmanship created in Christ Jesus. Unto good works which God had before ordained that we should walk in them. I can't speak for all of you this morning, but I thank God for grace. I thank God for a gift that I don't even deserve. But every morning, grace puts up with me. Every day, grace puts up with you. But through it all, God is good. So there is an urgency of now. We can no longer put off today, what put off tomorrow what we can do today. And one of these days, a tomorrow may start without you. And while you're here today, you need to make sure that Jesus is your Savior. You need to make sure that he is your Lord of Lords. You need to make sure that he is your King of Kings. There is an urgency. There is an urgency of now. And I'm praying this morning that you understand that time is not on your side. You need to know that things may seem rough and, and the going may get tough the hills they are hard to climb 
But I decided a long time ago to make cheers my choice. And you need to understand that can't nobody do us like Jesus. Can't nobody help us like the Lord, my Lord. And I'm glad this morning that uh, he's right by my side. Mm, no matter how the pandemic spread, mm, just like the pandemic is spreading, we should spread love. We should spread kindness. We should spread meekness. We should spread the good news that Jesus, he's alive and well. He died on an old rugged cross. Put him in a borrowed tomb. But uh, Sunday morning, he got up in his hands somebody said well preacher how do you know that he got up you wasn't there how do you know that he got up well if you want an answer it's the only one I had I know he got up Number one, I believe by faith. Number two, he got up because he rose. One day, he got up in this soul of mine. He got up in my walking. He got up in my talking. He got up in my living. He got up in my praise. He got up in my worship. If you know he's good, why don't you wave your hand? If you know he's good, why don't you tell somebody in your home with you right now? The Lord has been good to me. Is he all right? There's an urgency of now. Don't put it off. Tomorrow is not promised, but while I'm here, I'm going to say hallelujah. While I'm here, I'm going to praise his name. While I'm here, I'm going to say thank you, Lord. Is he all right? If you know he's all right, you can just type yes. If you know he's been good, say yes. Yeah. Say yes. Yeah. Say yes, he's good. Ah, he's good. He's good. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. There is an urgency of now. Repentance is now. Salvation is now. Grace is now. But to end it all up and to sum it all up. Love is now. No greater love than this. A man will lay down his life for a friend. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but he would have an everlasting life. And if you hear this morning and you are under the sound of my weak voice. You are to give your life to Jesus Christ. He is worthy of all of our prayers. <laughs> Can't nobody do us like Jesus. He is the one that has saved our souls. He is the one. As the minister of music play, you don't know the man. He's right there with you. 
he's right there to care for you to lift you to higher heights the urgency of now repentance is now salvation is now grace is now love is now at this moment at this very hour wherever you are he's right there to hold your hand he's right there to give you what you need we know God is able and we know God can make a way somehow we want you to pray for many who are in bereavement many who are sick Brother Brass, the Brass family, the Smith family, the Newton family, the Higgs family, the Franklin family. Those who have been our sick and shed-ins. Mr. White, Booker T. Amen. Brother Sister Jenkins. Those of you who are sick, those of you who are in bereavement, we're asking you to text me and let me know that we will pray for you. That God will continue to keep you is our prayer. We love all of you. Let us pray now as we prepare to take the communion this morning. Remember, I asked you all to get some form of leavened bread or cracker or juice. And we're going to bless it right now. Hope you have it with you. We're going to bless it. Oh, eternal God, our Father, we ask now as we partake of the Lord's Supper. You said do it in remembrance of you. We know that it is not a requirement of salvation. But it is an audience, audience of the church that whenever we do so, we do in remembrance of you. Father, those who, who have, those who want to partake, bless the bread and bless the wine. If any change you need to be, Father, change the condition of our hearts. Let us examine ourselves to see that we are worthy to partake of the Lord's supper. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. He took bread. He took bread, he broke it, he blessed it, and said, this is, a, this is a symbol of my body, which will be broken for many. Eat in remembrance of me, and they did eat. The cup that consisted of the fruit of the vine, a symbol of my blood that will be shed for the remissions of sins. Drink in remembrance of me, and they did drink. As often as you do this, you show forth death, burial, and resurrection till I come again. Amen. 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 God always has a way of showing you, even during a pandemic, his Holy Spirit is still at work. As a young man that has been with us, a minister of music, volunteering his times to come to be a part of his worship service. And he said the Holy Spirit talked with him and he talked with the Holy Spirit. And he said he want Mount Zion to be his church home. Amen. As my brother come to get on the camera with me. Amen. We cannot touch. Amen. But we extend the right elbow of fellowship. <laughs> brother, give your name. Charles Pratt. Brother Charles Pratt is coming as Christian experience to join the Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church family. And so much bad news. Everybody should be clapping. I still want you to clap in your homes. Because even with the pandemic, he says, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men. And this idea that I mean, the church house may be empty, but the church is packed to capacity. And his work is still here. So all of our Mount Zion family, family and friends, can we give God a hallelujah? Hallelujah. If you can't say it, type it. Let it be seen on screen that you are hallelujah. happy for the increase. Yes, we sir. thank God for our brother Pratt. As he would come, we gave him the right elbow of fellowship. Yes, right. Because we have to be obedient to those who have rule over us. Yeah. We're glad to have him in our midst. And we invite you, if you don't have a church home, please do so. Amen. God is good yes, all of the time. Before we end, we want you all to continue your financial obligations to the church. Uh, you can mail it to the Mount Zion 
Baptist Church, P.O. Box 7091, Alexandria, Louisiana, 71306. Again, we are so glad. Remember, there's an urgency of now. Yes, Lord. Repentance is now. Mm -hmm. Salvation is now. Grace is now. Love is now. Mm -hmm. Until next time, we love all of you. Be blessed and stay in. Stay safe. Stay in God's will and stay in God's way. Be blessed.